Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, on behalf of Accustats Video Productions, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 17th Derby City Classic. This is the George Fells Memorial Straight Pool Challenge. This is the final match. I'd like to take a brief moment here before I introduce our two finalists to recognize a good number of people here that have once again made this straight pool event possible. And of course, as you know, we are honoring the great George Fells, who regrettably we lost just over a year ago. So in his memory and honor, this tournament has been so dedicated. We'd like to thank, of course, Simonis and Aramuth for providing both cloth and balls for us here. Uh, we certainly want to thank Diamond Billiard Products, as always, for their tremendous support for this particular special event, along with longtime supporter of pool, especially straight pool, Stu Matana, Rich Klein, uh, of course, our very own Bob Jewett, and Stan Haynes. Gentlemen and companies, thank you very, very much for once again what you've done. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention two other very special gentlemen who have worked tirelessly for the past nine days putting through the qualifying rounds to bring us to our final eight, which has brought us down to our final two. So I'd like everybody to acknowledge the tremendous efforts of both Bill Moropoulos and Dennis Walsh. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a 125 point final. One race, excuse me, one game to 125 points to crown our champion for 2015. Uh, this will be played with a 40 second shot clock, one extension each player per 14 ball rack, and it's all ball fouls. So at this time, I have the honor to introduce our two finalists. Our first finalist comes to us all the way from Moscow, Russia. His qualifying run to bring him into the final eight was 100 balls. He defeated Mika Imanen, Hall of Famer Mika Imanen, to get through the semifinal to appear here. He's sponsored by the Russian Federation, by Gazprom, and by Kaspersky Laboratories. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a warm welcome for Ruslan Chinikov. Thank you so much. And his opponent from Glasgow, Scotland. His path to the final included a semi-final win over Warren Kiamko. His qualifying run also stands as the high run of the tournament to date, a 227 in the qualifying rounds. And if that's not beaten, he will receive the high run bonus. He's sponsored by Kings of Vapor, Town Break and Jump Tips, Chalk Cube, Kamui, and Volturi cases. We call him Eagle Eye. It's Jason Shaw. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, go ahead and rack for the break. They're gonna, we're gonna do rack your own so the players are satisfied with their opening rack and subsequent racks. And again, uh, all ball fouls, and Bill and Dennis over here will keep score and we'll update you after every 14 ball rack of the current score. Mr. Shaw wins the lag, and he has elected to have his opponent break. Hello and welcome, pool fans. We have the George Fells Straight Pool Championship. My name is Mark Wilson, and along with us is professional billiards commentator Jerry Forsyth. Tremendous firepower on display here, Jerry. Oh, man. I am so looking forward to this. These are two guys who cannot miss a shot, it seems like. And they have been hot all week. Chinnikoff lost the leg, forced a break, played defense. Now, he's not going to be overly pleased with that result. That three ball is a cherry waiting to be picked. 
Yeah, this is a challenging shot for just the mere mortals. For these guys, they'll make this table seem like it plays like a bar table. They're so <laughs> accurate. Now, Jason Shaw is very sound in terms of his accuracy, but not very sound in terms of his straight pool strategy. And I, for that reason, I kind of think Chinnikov has a slight edge in the match. Race to 125 points. Watch it's going to be an opening foul. That ball will not count. And one of the only games in pool where you can go uh, have a negative score. This is a one pocket. So Chinnikov now leads zero, zero to, to negative to, one. Zero to minus one. Yeah, here we go. The rack is very important. Reading the rack. A lot of different skill sets enter into this game. And, of course, in straight pool, you don't get ball in hand anywhere on the table. It's in the kitchen. And that was really an un unfortunate uh, bounce off the secondary object ball for Shaw. He made a good ball, made a good hit. Didn't expect the scratch, but it did. Chenikov now uh, lands awkwardly on the remaining balls. I think he can... Then cut the five in, but then what? These players, uh, especially the skilled ones, very adept at reading the rack for dead ones or potential dead ones. Use the whole pocket, but it went down. I. This is not really working out to plan. He needs to get a shot on a ball like the nine ball where he can pick a couple of other balls out of the rack. There's a three foul, three consecutive foul rule in play. And so it's imperative that you remember when your opponent's on a foul, because strategically you can not expose yourself to risk and take a foul back. Great player's not afraid to give away one point if it gives them a tactical advantage in the distribution of the balls. Looks like Chinnikov is content to play a bank shot here. He's gonna try to draw a long ways with this. Yeah, he's gotta go three rails. How'd he hit it, Jerry? I don't know yet. Uh, I don't think he's happy. <laughs> no. But he did make the ball. Now, it looks like uh, he could take on the 12, but he he's going to opt to play safe here and just roll up on this. Not a great result. He could have taken a foul by pushing the cue ball all the way to the far end of the table and make Shaw play some type of a thin hit that may redistribute the balls. Leaving him close to the pack would now give Shaw a possibility of maybe making a stop shot that sticks the cue ball to the pack and picking up a rail. Good for Chinnikov. He didn't leave that, but now Shaw is off his foul. And looks like Shaw's going to get the best of this exchange here. Well, this could be a lengthy exchange. Now, Chinnikov, yeah, he's in, he's kind of in a bind here to play safe. He's, it looks like he's going to rub the 15 ball, but that's sensitive. Mm. Yeah, I really think he'd have been better served to take the minus one point deduction and put the cue ball a long ways away from the pack. And that would have precluded Shaw from responding in this fashion. Well, he may do that now. Take a foul. Well, he's not, he yeah. no longer has his opponent on a foul is the problem. Yeah. And then if he was to do that, Shaw could just turn around and take a foul and leave the cue ball right where he put it. So he will not derive a benefit. Good shot, though. Shaw once again rubbing the eight. Perfect. Got some distance here. Yeah, he now has well the upper hand. Can you explain the penalty for three fouls? Yeah, the foul, you, you lose one point for each foul, and on the third consecutive foul, you will lose an additional 15 points. Plus, you must rack the balls and re-break from the start of the game with the score standing as is. Now, this is where Shaw might... No, he does know. Okay, he's going to take a foul back, push it to the center of the table. Perfect. Now, Chinnikov, once again, will have to play a very thin, long hit. He barely missed grazing it last time. And he missed again. Yep, yeah, he's on two fouls now. Minus one. Ball in hand behind the 
this is interesting because you have to shoot across the head string. So now because of the, by virtue of the pocket scratch, if Shaw wants to make a foul, he'll have to lag it two cushions to the center of the end rail there, right where he's standing. What about from there, and I've never seen this done, I'm just asking for your expertise, shooting right above the second diamond with a lot of English to spin it back down to the head rail. Yeah, this no way you could, but this is the easier way to get there. Both players now on two fouls, so now Chinnikov is at risk. He has to make a good hit here, which perhaps will provide Shaw with something to shoot at. And yeah. that's just what's happened. Yeah. Now Shaw has to still remember he's on two fouls should he accidentally scratch or bump the cue ball here. Miss cue, yeah. But he's in a good position. If he makes this ball, he'll have a break ball. Now both players are off the foul situation. And Shaw, this will be a, a little bit non-traditional back cut that will shatter the rack. Uh-oh. A little scary. All worked out. Bumped the 12 up. Looks like he can deal with that. Ball selection is critical in this. Providing a long run, you need to play pretty scripted patterns. The most difficult part of this game for me was always developing a break ball. Oh. oh. Well, Jason certainly did not expect to miss that shot. Well, Chinnikov has uh, a few options here. I guess Shaw was playing position on the Robin's Egg Blue 7 ball. Got some clutter down there. Doesn't look like the 6 and the 1 are lined up direct with the pocket. No. Real good straight pull is played in such a way that you don't take many chances. So if he was going to draw back into the clutter, no, he didn't. I'm sure that was a good decision, but when you go into the pack, you would like to have an insurance ball near a pocket somewhere, should you not fall on something else to play, mm -hmm. so you don't trap yourself. This should set him up. Well, I don't know if he's playing that ball. Get that out of the way. Now, this is where he can go into the pack here because he has that 12 ball in such close proximity to the side pocket. Cruises it in there. Picked up other shots, but just in case he didn't, he had the 12 ball. And that's good pattern play. Wouldn't mind the... Well, he got a little deep. He wouldn't have minded having a slight angle on that where he could have nudged the one ball up. Now you try to get the angle on the 13 ball to, pocket, to move the one ball out of the rack for a break shot. Perfect angle there. That's a good straight pull. You have to be very accurate at hitting the pocket. It's not just pocketing the ball, but to hit the pocket in the proper place to have this. Now he'll nudge the one ball forward. There's his break shot. Got that, the key ball. Did that clear the rack? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't see the chalk line. I'm pretty sure it did. Because they're using that thick wood rack. Well, it, apparently it didn't. And he's going to choose to use the ball near the side pocket, draw back to the center of the table so he can use backspin on a thin... <gasps> oh, he miscued. Well, I don't know what happened there. That was Kamui chalk, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the chalk, my friend. Oh, my. Uh-oh. Big trouble. Big trouble. We've seen some uh, kind of uh, uncharacteristic errors here from Jason Shaw. He's missed a couple shots that you would, you would seriously hate to bet that he misses. Well, he'll get warm in a minute. <laughs> Well, I think Chinnikov's going to play the one, leave the 12 there, because he can really ramp up the power and pocket the ball and have that cue ball carry him off the rail. 
problem with this is he's accelerating or moving away from his angle, so he's going to go the other way. Okay, this will be two cushions into the back of the pack, most likely. Boy, that that's tough because you're kind of leaving yourself to fate as to where that cue ball winds up after contact. I mean, perhaps he's good enough to go two rails and hit the side of the ball. He's the, the correct side of the correct ball, but that's a tall order. Well, the, the proper location to land now is between the two and the ten in the back corner of the rack. These guys are pretty adept at that shot, so I fully expect him to get it. Now he hit the middle of the pack, but worked out terrific. Well, well maybe not. Know. Does he have? Well, he has the, the seven ball for sure, looking on the overhead. So he'll know about the 15. He's going to take a little look at that. Doesn't care for it. All ball fouls are being played here. If you rub a ball, it's a foul. Good solid stroke there. Gets the cue ball up. Now he can take care of that 14 ball. Real good straight pool is played mostly on four pockets, the two side pockets and the two corner pockets nearest the rack. When you find a bunch of balls far in the uh, far corner pocket, you're not playing very well. Picks up the ideal angle to go into the pack here. And while he doesn't have a specific insurance ball, the six ball might be in the back of his mind that he at least has that if he hits the eight and 11 on the high side. Went through him, a couple kisses, nine ball. It's a very interesting form of pool, and this is what I grew up playing, was the 14-1 continuous pocket billiards. Because unlike nine ball, you have to determine what shot you're going to play and then execute it. And sometimes players that are less skilled in this form of pool, they have trouble differentiating from decision making and execution. Then they try to do it both and kind of have ambiguity and uncertainty about their shot selection, which is later reflected in their stroke. He will try to chip the eight out for a break shot here. Caught it a little strong. So right now, he really doesn't have an ideal break ball. He might try to develop the 11 on this shot with a little bit of backspin. No, he's going forward. Hmm. This end game is going to be fun to watch. Now he's going to have to scramble around here to develop something. Such a good ball pocketer. Perhaps when he pockets the 10, he can move the three. That's a little low. He would like to nudge that yeah. 11 out. He could maybe use the three to develop the 11 and have the 10 as his insurance ball here. There you go. Yeah, that's the angle he's picked up, it looks like. So three and rub that 11 out in the open. Just move it ahead about three inches to the side. Just a little high. Yeah, it is. That's a problem. And, you know, for the amateur player, they're content to just clear the pack. But when you have someone on the other side of the uh, opposition here that has the firepower, Jason Shaw, you do not want to gunfight rack to rack just getting uh, 14 or 15 at a time. So now, mm. I guess he's going to play the eight ball and come across two cushions. Be a pretty good shot here if he executes it and gets his angle. No, he played the 11, just settled for this. This is a very treacherous shot. You can hit the side of the pack and go all the way down table and even occasionally scratch in the far corner yeah. with this. Yeah, that's... That's what he had. Shaw is still at negative one. Shinnikov has now 24. We are racing to 125, or going to 
125. This will be a high velocity shot, I would imagine. Oh, great shot. Well, that worked out beautifully. Yeah, I played it with a little top spin, just a hint, not the effective top spin, and that allowed that stun effect, and then you saw the run on the cue ball. That really opened him up. And Chinnikov really is a complete straight bull player. He really understands the game. We can see here in the early stages his ball selections are very good. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you couple that with super firepower, should you get in trouble... For me, I have to have a textbook pattern to run 100 balls. For this guy, he can probably run 100 off-angle shots and then start to get into <laughs> position. Yeah, this is looking good. He's starting to really pick up some momentum now. Mm -hmm. And Shaw, he straightens his trousers and uh, gets a little bit more comfortable because he can see he's going to be in the chair for a while. Now, would you leave that five ball there for a while, just as type of insurance? Uh, yeah, maybe. And the one ball currently is a break shot. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking. It looks maybe like the 11 ball might be uh, very makeable in the corner because it looks like it would throw just the right amount. So should Shinnikov get in trouble, he does have a backdoor plan with that also. Now, he could sail into the bottom of the stack, but he definitely needs to hit the four ball if he does so here. Yeah, he hit the four ball. That, okay, that removed all doubt. Now the 13 ball is an ideal break shot. And the 10 ball would not be a bad key ball. If you could shoot the 10 ball in the far corner past that nine ball, if he cleared them all off to that point, that would be a stop shot or just a little bit of draw. And he'd be right on it. Doesn't have to play it that way. He can use the 14 or the 5 as a key ball as well. The key ball being the ball right before the break shot. That would be the 14th ball that's played, while the 15th one remains on the table. Yep. Well, right now we'll know what kind of a key ball he's looking to play. He's going to take care of the 10. That way he doesn't have to be quite as precise. So it's going to be 14 5 one. And I believe he will play for a center of the table so he can go to the side cushion and bounce out of the one. That gives him a liberal margin of error to fall in the proper angle here for the 13. This was absolutely a textbook distribution and take a um, clearance of the table here. He now leads 38 to minus one. And he's got that nice angle here where he'll get a lot of distribution of the pack. You know, and it, when, you're, when you're a little doggish, you're scared, you like to have another three or four inches with the cue ball to be a little straighter on the 13, but then you don't get the impact in the rack. And so the real good straight pool players, when they see you play another three inches closer to the center of the table on this break shot, they are aware now that you're scared and feel very emboldened and confident. Now, now do you play this shot with top, bottom, or center? Okay, when you're hitting the top two balls, you prefer to go center or lower. When you hit the bottom two balls, always high. He's going into the top two, so he'll be a little bit below center. Great shot there. <laughs> you can see he really rearranged the furniture. Ten ball hangs up. That doesn't hurt anything. No, that's a great insurance ball. May have to use it right away here. Never a bad idea. The first shot after that break shot is always important to get regain your control and momentum. So even if you are failing playing ideal position, you want to make sure you get that one in. And there's some clutter on the far rail over there. The 2, 8, 11, 1. Uh, those are all tricky little spots there. But you don't go after them right away. Well, he did. 
and he failed that and it worked out. He clipped everything, made everything much, much better. He was not intending to bump the nine on the way past, and that's when you're vulnerable. But things worked out. Generally, Murphy's Law takes effect. <laughs> it sure does. I just want to see what he does with the 111.8. I mean, I know he's got the two ball right there <clears throat> to move some stuff around with. He doesn't belabor the routine shots. You can see that because he's going to have to expend a lot of energy on some of these other circumstances. John Schmidt also advocates that. I was taught that you always remain disciplined and focused and just work harder. Right now, he'll be going in between the 8 and the 11. Or maybe just the 11. No, the 8 and 11, that's better. That way you don't have a chance to get hooked along the long rail. The key. These great players always want that cue ball free of the rail, and that gives them great latitude in what they can do. And they're such terrific shot makers. So he's going to leave the six ball for his break ball. That's a little low. It looks like right now that's all he has, however. They generally want him about three inches higher than that. By mm -hmm. higher, I mean away from the corner pocket. At this late stage of the rack, though, he does not have much luxury to play around. Might be going to the one ball here. I think he'll probably play the 11 first, then the one and the nine. Can he draw back along the side cushion there, above the no the one? That would yeah. be great. Yeah. And then, okay, didn't try to do too much with it. Wouldn't have minded having just a slight bit of an angle, but because he's so close, he can kind of manipulate the pocket a little bit with this shot and get the cue ball free of the cushion. Two. Super soft, slow roll here. Man, this kid's he's in good shape now. Showing no signs of slowing down. He's leading 52 to minus one. Be curious to hear what the unfinished run is currently. Must be about, I'm gonna guess, somewhere nearing 40 balls. Yeah. 43 it is. 43 unfinished, not bad. Anyone that has a headset out there, there's always a routine and customary round of applause at 50, should we get that far. That happens the second time at 100. This is a little bit tricky. He's going to clip the 10, bring the 10 ball down. And modern day straight ball players play this high velocity. Old timers used to chip and just get the 10 and the four loose and then work back to the pack. He will probably draw back the entire way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great shot, controlled the cue ball. Just the right amount of backspin, didn't overdo the backspin. Generally, do not like to go right back into the pack on your second shot from the break shot. He chose not to wisely. Doesn't mean that it won't work out, but it's just usually not done that way because it does complicate things and leaves a lot more to the iffy side of chance. Stop shot here. You can play the four next. No, he's going to play the 12, I think. Okay, he feels like he can rub the five ball with this shot then if he's playing it this way. Yes. Okay, good. Well, now we get to see a little shot making here. I think he'll play this. No, he's going to play the five. I thought he might go after the seven. Yeah, I would look for him to do the five, then the two. And check out that seven ball. That offers oh. a little more cue ball control because he can okay. collide into the clutter. And that also figures to make the rest of the rack play better, although it didn't. When you move that ball, when you have a 10 ball on the, lodged on the cushion near the side pocket, that's always the trickiest one to get to. Mm -hmm. And 
when you open up those two balls down there, a lot of times you'll get something that allows you to get at them. In this case, it didn't work out, but it does make the target to break it off there easier because he has two balls there to hit rather than just one. Well, he can draw into the 110 here, but is that the wise thing to do? No. No, and there, he, see how he nudged the three up there? Mm -hmm. That wasn't random chance. So he's anticipating being able to get through this rack. Now he can take care of the two. There's our customary round of applause at 50. And I think he will roll down, get on the 15, and then he can attack the one with this shot. And this, he will go in there lightly. He will not hammer this. Pretty shot. Oh, oh didn't get the result he wanted, Mark. It, just a, a slight bit more impact. The 10 trickles up in front of the side pocket. The good news is the 1 and the 10 might be a combination now that wasn't there. So now he's going to have to scramble a bit here late in the rack. Yeah, because now he's taking his break ball, what would have been his break ball. Yep. Can he draw back to the 1 and the 10 here? You generally don't like to do this because a lot of times it double kisses over there, so he's not even going to try that. His next break shot could be a challenge. Oh, this is a nice shot here. He's going to be able to play the combination. That'll be one of those center of the table cut in the side, spider of the rack break shots. Mm -hmm. Five, 10, 13 is what the pattern should be here, I think. Use the far side of the side pocket to help him get the right angle here, and that bounced away from the cushion just the right amount. Now this gives him quite a bit of latitude on his position play. Gorgeous hit. Look at that. That's pretty. That really pretty is. <laughs> this guy's tough business here. Okay, so tell me where you want to hit the rack on this break. Head balls. Yeah, you got to get in between the head balls. If you skip the side of the rack, you could easily scratch on this, and nor does it distribute the balls very much. So you want to get between the 10 and the 4. And you're not worried about locking the cue ball up inside the no, rack? No, it's high velocity. Yeah, it won't do that. Very interesting break shot here, Jerry. Total score now is 66 to minus 1. Well, just what you said happened. It worked its way in. If he, he really, what that means, he landed heavy on the, uh, what was that, the four ball. Mm -hmm. Now he's in trouble. Is he calling a bank shot here? Guess so. No safety there. He overcut it. Yep. Well, we get to see what Mr. Shaw can do now. It's a nice run there. And Jason Shaw is going to take a, a momentary break here, folks. Okay, everybody, we're back. Here we go. Now we get Jason Shaw rolling in the four ball. He needs to take a few shots here to get warm. Wisely did not try to attack the stack there, but rather pick off some on the perimeter and see if you can't pick up a proper angle, such as what he would have on the 11 ball next here. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he'll attack it right here. This way he can sail the cue ball between the 3 and the 6. That's the way to go. Little top spin. Very good. That redistributes them. How would you like to have Jason Shaw's firepower and your knowledge? You know, oh, I mean, man. I always dream of that. What If I could pocket balls like he can, I know how to play. I just can't execute. He can execute, and sometimes he doesn't really know how to play. You know, so, But he'll get onto that a lot easier than I will, his skill set. You know, as much as I love this game and as much many hours that I've spent playing it over my lifetime, I never developed the hand-eye coordination for the type of position play that these gentlemen have. My cue ball doesn't listen to me well. 
Uh, you know, uh, that's hours of training rather than uh, hand-eye coordination, unless you have some type of disability. It's just that you don't put as much time into it as these guys. Well, I also don't, I don't seem to visualize as well as these guys do. I don't get that firm mental image of the cue ball path. Well, Shaw content to use the 15 ball for his break shot here. <laughs> uh, playing this rack expeditiously, he has now lost his ideal position. <laughs> This is non-traditional straight pull right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. shot making. Yeah, he's scrambling about. This will produce big runs if you're super at firepower, but the degree of consistency. Well, he's going to still be able to use this 15 ball. He just went at it a different way. Than, look at how good that is. That's amazing. <laughs> he moves the cue ball two cushions. Normal straight pull players do not want to be moving the cue ball two cushions, but nonetheless. He did it effortlessly, and there's no there's no ambiguity or second guessing himself. That's just how he plays, you know, which makes it great. Because I shoot that same shot, thinking, boy, I really shouldn't be here, but here I am. And then, boop, and then I hit it. And then, oh, I hit it a little too hard, Mark. Okay, well, Shaw will waste no time. Nice clearance of the previous rack. Oh, Jason, a little abrupt. And it doesn't mean he has to miss, but, uh, you know, he went after that in such a way, kind of casually. I do not think that we'll see Chinnikov playing many balls in that way. The trail up to this 14 ball, that will really develop the rack for Chinnikov to go ahead and make a total clearance. And the cruel thing about straight pool is that Jason now has to sit there and wonder if he'll get back to the table. Oh, yeah. That's why you really have to be a bit more respectful of those shots because playing someone this caliber, you, you never know when you're, it will be your last turn. was the Cadillac of pool. I used to attend the U.S. Open in Chicago. Mm -hmm. That was the premier tournament. It was just one a year. You had to qualify unless you were a previous winner, and so you had phenomenal talent. 32 players in the field. Every one was a killer. How did you qualify? You had to go around the country. The guys like Nick Varner would scramble around the country. Lou Batera would fly in from California to Rockford to try to win a qualifier against all the top talent. Rempe, Siegel, right. Hopkins. Yeah. They were just kids at that time. Yeah. It was absolutely fascinating. The, the old guard was Luther Lassiter, Irving Crane, Joe Balsas, and <laughs> played great. Pretty sure Cicero was there. Chinnikov thought he overcut that slightly. Yeah, he got a little nervous at the end of that shot. <laughs> well, he's okay. He knew at that speed, if he rubbed the point on the way in, it was likely bound to hang around on the edge of the pocket rather than fall in. But he hit it well enough. That's how good these guys play. Sometimes they almost miss. <laughs> very hard from our vantage point to see what is and then is not uh, in the rack so I don't know about this I would think you would want to leave the seven ball where it's at that's a break shot I think he that's agrees in, but maybe well, not. he could use the he could also use the nine ball for a break shot that's not ideal but is a, a, a terrific secondary type of object or break shot okay now what's he got here if the seven is not in, he might work to move it a little bit further, but it looks like it's out. I'm pretty sure it is out now that I take a better look at it. Oh, 
Yeah, it's definitely out now. He can draw down to the end rail and bounce up a little bit. Well, now he's second guessing himself. He may end up using the nine ball. We'll find out here. Okay, he could draw down, bounce out. Oh boy, nice angle there. Good speed, good touch. Top spin or draw? Draw is preferred, but I don't know if he can do it. Yeah, yeah. He does. Oh, he stunned it up there. Did he do it too does much? Does he have enough angle? Yeah, he's pretty flat on this one. He got into the cue ball just a little bit too low. It's doable, and this guy has a super powerful stroke, too, uh -huh. by the way. So, Chinnikov now on an unfinished run of 14. Is that correct? Unfinished run of 28. Was that the rack that Jason? 14. Yeah, correct. Okay. okay. I was thinking that was the rack that Shaw splattered him open on the break shot. See how he didn't overdo the draw there? Well, he got into it a little bit more. Got the balls loose. Now, hmm. Yeah, this is can be disconcerting. He's got a long, tough get on the 13 ball. And and then he doesn't, I don't know if the four passes. He, yeah, the even six. if the four passes, it requires pretty good position to pocket it confidently. Yeah. Well, he's playing the four now. This is gutsy. Oh, wow. Look how pure that shot was. Who the heck could beat this guy in any game? I remember the first time I saw him here, and uh, we were playing uh, the straight pull qualifier on the 5x10, and it was, he was tearing that thing up. He declared the 14 ball. He comes over, takes a good look at it. This is what Shaw lacked doing in his break shot. Watch out, side pocket. Did not overdo it there. Got a fortuitous kiss from the point, but he made a great shot. He had the eight no matter what. Eight's over the pocket. All the earmarks of someone that's played a lot of competitive straight pool. Ten ball straight in, but he'll play the five so that he can move some furniture in the rack. Solve that problem. And while doing, landed a little awkwardly here. He has to be mindful and not rub the six ball on this shot. Just roll it in, bounce off the cushion. That's all the further you're going to go. Play the three ball next. No, get out on top. One ball's an okay break shot. Down the road. So he's drawing back on a rub the 12. Yep. Ooh. Well, the three passes if the 12 doesn't. Certainly does not want to play the two ball here because the cue ball then collides into them, uh, the three and the 12, and then you have to rely on picking up a proper shot. So he's going to go the other way. He'll now use the two ball as his future break shot. That was a good shot. Using yes, the 11 to move it to the center of the table and hold the cue ball there for the six. That gives him quite a bit of wide berth here, position-wise. He wouldn't mind doing something with the 12 next. He says, giddy on up Needs here. Needs to move. Giddy on up. I don't think so. No, he's a little short. Okay, well, if that is a little short, he's got some work to do now. Yeah, if he's down looking like this, that is really close, and... <clears throat> no, he's calling it. He's. Oh, okay. It's more room than I thought he had. Yeah, he used a little power. It didn't mean really to stun up that high. He wouldn't mind having just a little bit more to work with here. That was a stun follow rather than an effective follow. Now he's falling perfect here. He's got to take just a little bit of draw. 
We're going to just pass the side, or the, yeah, just to pass the center of the table. Now he's going all the way down and coming back on his angle of approach. Getting a little flat, a little flat. He's not liking it. <laughs> well, he's on a run of 28. Leads the match now, 95 to 12. And we're only going to 125. You know there's a bonus for high run? Yes. And if you're on a run of 50, which he would be, should he complete this, he would then be able to go after the bonus money. Oh. After the match. So. Yeah. Now, <laughs> some of these tight wads around here <laughs> reduce it. You have to be on a run of 100 now. It's, nonetheless, so be it. See how he handled the cue ball? He hit with power, but then the cue ball just trickled a foot from the stack. You know, yeah. that's a great straight pull there. That means you're going into the pack very, very accurately to do that. You can't just go in there and hit the clatter off of balls and hope that it happens like that. That's all by design. He does have a nice, clean stroke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much. This is someone that plays a lot of pool. Looks like he has the five ball. Yes. And the ability to come back up into the rack. Well, you want to pick on the eight ball here, the eight and the 13. That way you have the 14 no matter what. No, he went to the other side of it. Yep. Looks like it all worked out. I was afraid he was going to get tied up there on the rail. He's a very controlled player, you know, and you can just see his command over the rack and his confidence with the strategies yeah. employed here. Yeah. As opposed to the opponent, Jason Shaw, who has very little experience at straight pool, but a lot of experience at making great shots. But Chinnikov does not rely on shot making. He makes great tactical decisions. Yeah, he's inching closer and closer to the 125 mark here. Currently at 103. 103 now, yeah. He will need some balls out of the subsequent rack here, so he does need to still be mindful of a break shot. Could use the 12. 12's a little high. Sometimes you back cut that into the side pocket. When it's that high. Well, that was to declare a pattern. I think it's going to be something with the 15 ball and then the 12 ball last. The 12 ball being the break shot. Right now, he could go into the 12 and try to move it for the traditional break shot, but that would give up some control. He'd have to feel very confident about his ability to hit the high side of the 12 here at the proper speed. Looks like he does feel that way. No? Okay, conservative. Oh, he's just going to play stop shot three, stop shot one. Yeah. That's the other choice. No, he's looking at the 12. <laughs> okay. I don't... Okay, no, I don't think so, yeah. Much better to use the 12. That's the optimum one here. And I'm just saying that based on what's left. Wait a minute. No, oh, he's going for the, he's going to cut it into the side, so he's got to draw back. Oh, good angle. Good angle. This is the one that got him tied into the rack earlier when he ended up having to try to play a cross-corner bank at the end of his run. Well, he now leads 109 to 12. He's on a run of 42. Yeah, this was all brought on by a missed break shot by Jason Shaw. Junk off with a sip of Pepsi over here. He's ready to go. Powder's up. This would be his final break shot. Mm-hmm. Shaw knows he's in trouble. But there's just nothing you can do in this game. 
Oh, oh. okay. Well, Mr. Shaw has another opportunity. Trailing 109 to 12. All right. Well, Jason Shaw can still get the bonus money here, Jerry. Yes, he can. <laughs> he has to be on a run of 100 at the end of the game, but he can do it. Oh, he's run several hundreds this week. You know, it's interesting, though. It's much harder to run 100 in a competitive circumstance like this where you can lose the game failing mm -hmm. that rather than just go all out because now you can play a little bit different because right. you have to get a run. Yeah, right? a little you got to be mindful of winning yeah. the game. So that changes that. And either way, a run of 100 balls, you can consider yourself a life master. He's just one stroke in these shots. Yeah, he, he really doesn't care much probably for this game, and he doesn't respect it. But it has a way of getting uh, exacting its revenge for you being a bit carefree. Six. Yeah, he should take the 14 here. And doesn't. I'm going to move the cue ball. And you will notice with Shaw's uh, approach to the game, you'll see a lot more travel with his cue ball. And then now you're susceptible to things going awry. Yeah. Slightly wrong angles or uh, awkward shots. Right now, hoping to use the three ball as his break shot. 10, 15 ball. He looks like he's in a hurry to get home. Right. And, uh, don't be lulled into a false sense of security that this guy can't hammer you with a huge run because he definitely can. Oh, Just yeah. won't be traditional looking. Yeah, it'll look a little strange. Good job there. Yeah. Well, now Shaw on a run of 14 with the ideal break shot. Score of the match, 109 to 26. Okay, tell me what ball you want to hit here on the rack. I want to go into the 15 and the 7 here. A little bit below center. Well, he hit where you said. 15. Four balls. <laughs> Twirls the cue ball up out of there. Good shot. Takes no time worrying about it. Hmm. Okay, now he can move some balls around. Yeah, super fire, firepower was apt description for both of these guys when we started. There he's bumping ball. Yeah, this is scramble around here. That's not how it looks. Well, that six now could be a break ball. Good shot. He can back cut this ball. No, he's gonna have to use the key ball. Get rid of it. He wants the same type of an angle here. One cushion to the center of the table now. 
look at that. He drills it up. That's just amazing. Uh, phenomenal gift of talent, accuracy, fearlessness. And he's on a run of 28. I don't even think he's racking them properly. I think he's a little bit low. I guess they have the triangle drawn on the tail. So the spot's pretty far ahead now. Yeah, I don't think that's right. It does look low. Yeah. If you set a ball in there, it would not be freezing. That sort of helps him to have him a little bit low, given where the sixth ball is. Now this is that's that's the break shot that I'm used to seeing when the balls are distributed like that, but they don't hit it that hard. They hold the three down there. It oftentimes leaves you an angle to go into them much better. <laughs> this will be a pretty shot here. One way or the other. If he tries to go into the pack here and misses, I predict it'll be well overcut. No? A <laughs> great shot there. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, poor Joe Balsa said with his style of play, but Irving Crane would roll over in his grave. Yeah, yeah. there yeah. we go. Yeah, no, you will not be getting away with that. <laughs> Bank shot. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay, that's how it's done. Is that our first bank shot of the match? Mm, no, Chinnikov played a bank cross side earlier. Oh, you're, right. Yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah, you only see routine banks play. This is too expensive to try very many. They're off angle. Jerry and I are laughing about the uh, different uh, application of a, a pattern or or foregoing any pattern play, but the guy who has that kind of uncanny accuracy, he can run 100 balls on you in a heartbeat. Yeah, but these are really two totally different styles of play. Six. Yeah, interesting contrast. Shows, yeah. shows any style of work if you're good enough at that style. Yeah. He doesn't belabor the fact that he was long and off angle there, like most straight pool uh, players would. You know, Joe Balsas played somewhat like this. I don't know if you're the meat man. Mm -hmm. he, he was heavy handed. I don't know if you ever watched him play, but oh, sure. he would definitely generate some runs that were, you know, highly irregular. Yeah, he was trying to go back and forth. A little too fast, caught up with him. So he had he had a run of he had a run of thirty eight there. Trails the match one oh nine to fifty one. Well Chitikoff now needs what, sixteen balls? Is that where we're no. What does he need yeah, he here? Needs, uh, yeah. 10, 16. sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. Okay. He does have a possibility to get on the five balls a break shot. He might even be able to get on the ten balls a break shot. That might be the better route. No, he's going to use the five. Now, see the amount of cue ball travel there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shaw would have 60 feet of travel through a rack, and Chinnikoff yeah. will have about 10 feet of total right. travel yeah, with the say, cue ball. The cue ball's already moved more for Shaw than it has... Uh, Ruslan. Uh oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. He tried to check it up with some inside. Oh, <laughs> he knows he made a colossal blunder there. Okay, so what's the strategy here? You don't have a break shot. Oh no, no, he's still playing break shot. He's gonna go two cushions high right. It looks like he. Or, well, maybe he's. Let me let me take a look at the overhead. Yeah, he doesn't have a break shot. Okay. The, if he's just a little flatter, or if he can, two rails around and you come into the back of the seven and the six. That's the ideal. It's asking the cue ball to do a lot right. of work. Okay. Okay. We can show you if, if you could, but it looks like he's too wide. He really needs to come here, here, and into this. That's the ideal zone. Now, here, he can just call safe and draw back and pull the cue ball back. 
He doesn't feel like he can do that. No, he tried to muscle up. Yeah. Now, see, this was where now he's he's at a deficit here. Doesn't he just play into the top two balls? And it's the dangerous. Ball the yeah. The, 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 this close range, sometimes you can get away with it. Long range, never do it. The few times that you escaped, and this worked out great. <laughs> Jason's in the mood to call something, I think. He's going to take a foul. Okay, colossal blunder now. So now, I think he'll play into the 10 ball and just stick it, but he has to be mindful that 8 ball's out, so he's just going to take a foul back. I don't much care for this. I think Jason can go or just roll up on the 10 and drive the 15 ball to the end rail and stick it to the pack, provided the eight ball does not go. It looks like he's good to go on that shot, though. He might not know it, though, because he probably hasn't played a lot of straight pool safeties. He hasn't played a lot of nine ball safeties. He just fires away. <laughs> if I could get the overhead, this would be a great time to show it. You just want to roll up here and stick this right here and then have that, what is that, the 15 ball come to the end rail. That's, oftentimes that's a straight pull safety that's very, very common. You just have to make, you hit a little bit the high side of the 10 so it kind of sticks to the 9 afterwards. So we, he's not even no, going he's, there. Okay, this works great. <laughs> a 9 ball safety. Now, Chinkoff has the option to put him way down table with an awkward back cut. And this is the part daring Jason Shaw to shoot this when his back is against the wall. is not a good idea. <laughs> He will not take any time. He will be going all out here, folks. <laughs> all his chips are in the middle here, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> and he has, uh, bravely, I'm afraid he's lost the pot with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. He, uh, did he not give up the one? He did not. I think he's a little low. Chinnikoff can back cut that 15 ball. Jenikoff now playing for 12 balls to win the match. Two. Yeah, he's double checking to make sure he no longer needs a break shot. He confers with Dennis Walsh. Seems to be some debate between the referee, Ruschel and Chinnikoff, and Dennis Walsh. They are content with whatever the score is that they listed. Yeah, they get a nice stop shot here on the eight if he wants. He's got the 14 in the side. Chooses to take that. Less congestion over there. Eases on down for the 12. Got the good angle there. The only way he could have really been in trouble is if he fell real flat, super straight. But he's close enough. He even could have managed that. Yeah, he will not have to expose himself to risk of going into balls or anything anymore. Chooses a seven here. Eight balls away. If our scoring agrees with the official scorekeeper, which I'm fairly certain it does. Three and then the two. Now well, maybe he'll take the nine. Let's see what's he got in mind here. Well, three and the two. Then the nine, I guess. Oh, that's pretty. That, you know, that looks so simple, but to me it's just a beautiful when these guys put the cue ball exactly where they want it. Nine. 
Needs three. And Ken Schumann now will warn the player playing for two after this shot. Playing for two correctly. Done. Kenny has good command of the rules, a good understanding of the game. Oh, he's the arena. Yeah, he is. Six ball and then the nine. Jason Shaw's misery will be over. And we will have a new champion. Ruslan Chenikov is the champion of the George Fells Memorial Straight Pool Challenge. I believe he's the first Russian champion we've had. What a great match. Yeah, it, deservedly so. Uh, Chinnikov really played classic straight pull there. Very pleasurable to watch. Shakes referee Ken Schumann's hand. And on behalf of Jerry Forsyth, Mark Wilson, all of us here at AccuStats, thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again soon.